Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Adobe updated Photoshop to version 23.3. In today's video, we're going to take a look at what's new and exciting in this, the latest version of Adobe Photoshop. The first item I'm just going to mention, although I think it is a significant update for some of you. Those of you that create text layers in Adobe Illustrator will now be able to copy and paste those text layers into Photoshop. Now you could do that in the past, but when you copy and pasted them from Illustrator into Photoshop, the text layer was rasterized. And when it's rasterized, you lose some of the typographic properties of the text layer. That is, you can't change the font, you can't change the spacing between the letters and the lines. So now it doesn't have to get rasterized anymore. So you could copy it as is and then, you know, do all those typographic property adjustments or changes that you need to do in Photoshop. So as I mentioned, I think that's a significant update for some of you. Now, many of us don't use Illustrator, so that's why I'm not demoing it in this video. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is they've added multi-threaded and GPU compositing. So if you do composites in Photoshop, you should find now that your computer will work a lot more efficient, efficiently because Photoshop is using the multi-threaded capabilities of the CPU and the GPU to um, handle the composite. Now by default, it should be turned on, but make sure that it is. Go up to Preferences. Preferences on a Mac is under the Photoshop menu. On a PC, it's under the Edit menu. When you go to Pref Preferences, go down to Performance. And right here, you could see Multi-Threaded Compositing. By default, this now should be checked on. Now this will only be able to work if Photoshop sees and recognizes the processor, the graphics processor in your computer. So over here on the right hand side, you can see it sees mine. It's showing it's an AMD Radeon Pro 5700 XT. So it sees the processor. Because of that, it enabled multi-threaded compositing. So that is a nice new feature as well. Now, another new feature is they've improved the sky replacement tool in Photoshop. The sky replacement tool worked okay, but it did have problems with images such as this, specifically uh, with a lot of lines in them. So if you have a lot of power lines, or in this case, the Brooklyn Bridge, and you have all these little fine lines and antennas and flags and everything up sticking up into the sky, it now will be able to much more effectively replace the sky in an image like this. To do that, we're gonna go up to Edit, and we're gonna go out down to Sky Replacement, and it's just going to pop in the last sky I used, which I believe was an AccuDrone sky. Yes, it was. Um, if you find that you're replacing skies quite often in images, you'll do yourself a real favor by buying the packages of AccuDrone skies. I think they're the best replacement skies on the market. In the description below this video, I have a link to their website. I also have a discount code you could take advantage of. Now, it replaced the sky. And as you could see, uh, between the wires, there's no haloing. Um, it did a great job. Even when you get in real close to these antenna up here, you could see that the sky is between all the little wires of the antenna. So it did a nice job. Now, there is a new slider. It's called edge lighting. And this will help you uh, further get rid of any haloing that might be around the edges. If you do have any haloing, any little white lines along these little edges, take edge lighting to the right and you should eliminate that haloing. And if you, maybe uh, the sky is overwhelming some of the wires, meaning it's covering it up, move it to the left. So you could, you know, improve the kind of um, mix between those wires and the sky behind it with that edge lighting slider. So that is a nice new feature because an image such as this, 
was difficult uh, for any sky replacement application to conquer. And you can see it really did a nice job. There's before and there's after. Now, the last new thing they added is when you save as. So I'm going to go up to File and I'm going to go down to Save As. And I get the normal dialog I normally get, but you'll notice here there's a button Save to Cloud Documents. I'll click on that and you can see you now have this dialog. Now by default, when you save, you may get this right away. If you do and you want to save it locally on your computer, just click on your computer and you'll pop back to this dialog. So we'll go to the Save to Cloud Documents. So you'll be able to save it to your Creative Cloud account. When you do that, then you'll be able to access it, let's say, with Photoshop for iPad or access it on another computer uh, that doesn't have access to your local drive that's on this computer. So you could save it to the Creative Cloud. That's another new feature of this version of Photoshop. And really, that's everything. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to Adobe's website uh, to a page where they talk about these new features that are found in this version of Photoshop. Again, that's 23.3. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.